When you have a very close relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal, you will understand that the greatest obstacle between us and victory are our sins. Our Palestinian brothers and sisters have already won. They have already acquired victory. And that is because they either depart from this world as shuhada insha'Allah. And if they live on, they will live as heroes. Ya Rasul Allah, lam yazal bi ismika ya shadu. Shaykh Abu Bakr is going to go first because he's older. <laughs> Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu is when he said, Atani Jibreel fa'amarani an uqaddim ala kabir. Jibreel came to me and he instructed me to give presents to those who are older. MashaAllah. So Shaykh is going to go ahead, inshaAllah. I always get inspired by Sheikh Abu Bakr. I was going to say, Radi Allah. May Allah be pleased with him anyway. <laughs> Sheikh Abu Bakr, may Allah Azza wa Jal preserve him. When it comes to connecting the reality on the ground with the greatest of speeches, and that is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Some of you guys may remember, I uploaded a video of his on my YouTube channel a couple of years ago. I was very, very active in speaking about that which is extremely colorful, right? Very, very active. The rainbow has been hijacked, right? And then I listened to a lecture of his, how he connected the colorful things with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its relatability, the relevance and whatever have you. It was so amazing, so wonderfully structured, better than anything that I ever covered pertaining to that which is colorful. And then I uploaded it onto my channel. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. Honestly, I don't want to praise him to his face. I can hear him mumbling, right? I really don't. Wallahi, but brothers and sisters, whenever I visit different countries and I travel internationally, and I know the people are going to be attending, I like to connect them to their local shiuch. Wallahi, you have amongst the individuals that you can go back to. When it comes to fatawa, when it comes to relevance, when it comes to relatability, when it comes to the reality on the ground. You are, wallahi, spoiled for choice. Honestly, you are. Benefit from your mashayikh. Don't just come to the masjid. When an international speaker comes, why? Because you see him on TikTok all the time. I don't even have a TikTok account, brothers and sisters. Right? You have amongst you people that can benefit you immensely. Be connected with them. Study with them regularly. I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you guidance from about two to three ayat in the Quran. The purpose of tonight's talk, inshallah ta'ala, is going to address the current global situation that we see faced by our brothers and sisters in Gaza and in occupied Palestine. There is absolutely no doubt that they are distressing scenes that we see, very difficult situation genocide, starvation, hunger, displacement, bombing of schools, universities, hospitals, and the list goes on and on and on, on. And so in this very difficult moment, the believer reflects and observes the situation, knowing that he cannot do anything at the moment. And you reflect and you observe the situation and the question that needs to be asked by each and every single one of us since we are believers and Muslims, is there anything in the Quran that can guide us in this difficult time, in this stressful moment, in this moment of calamity that is experienced by al Ummah? Does Allah Azza wa Jal address this issue? Is there something in the Quran which can be our light out of this darkness and misery that we're in? And absolutely. There is no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses this matter and in detail and discusses to us exactly how the heart of the believer should be at this very moment. How should your attitude be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you see what you see is unfolding? How should our heart respond? How should we feel? How should we behave? What should our emotions towards the situation be? And then most importantly, and Islam calls us to action. 
not just sit and get your heart correct and straightened by the guidance of Allah, but then what is the road to victory? What is the path to victory? How do we come out from this miserable state that we're in and rise back to victory and glory that we once used to enjoy as a ummah? These matters are mentioned in the Quran and they are there to stay until the last day. Whoever wants victory will only get victory through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one and nothing else. Every time Allah Azza wa Jal spoke about victory in the Quran, listen to what he said. He said, إِن يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهِ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ He said, if Allah was to give you victory, no one will defeat you. He tied victory to himself. Even if you're trying to seek victory from other than the path of Allah, you will not see it. In the story of Talut and Jalut, Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us of the moment of the believers defeating the disbelievers. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, فَهَزَمُوهُمْ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَقَتَلَ دَاوُودُ جَالُوتِ فَهَزَمُوهُمْ The believers crushed them. They destroyed Al-Jabbarin, those rebellious army that had occupied Jerusalem. فَهَزَمُوهُمْ Allah said, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ By the permission of Allah. Why was the word by the permission of Allah put in this ayah? To teach you and I that we can only defeat the enemy by the permission of Allah. So if you wanted the victory of Allah, you must be on the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must do what Allah azza wa jal wants you to do. That's how victory comes. And that's how victory has been mentioned in the Quran, always tied to Allah azza wa jal. If you seek victory on a path other than the path that Allah has drawn for us, then you are going to the path of defeat and misery. There is no success, there's no light at the end of that tunnel. Even though you might think that what we're doing is probably a solution, probably will bring us victory. Absolutely, if it's not on the path that Allah wants, it is defeat. It is inevitable defeat. Let me now share with you these ayat. Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Ali Imran mentions this guidance for life and it is ayat that bring hope amidst the pain that we're in and the suffering we're in i want you to imagine this at the very beginning in the battle of uhud i ask you a question how many were martyred fi sabilillah how many companions were martyred in the battle of uhud huh? how many were martyred the number 70 were martyred i want you now to imagine and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions walking among 70 dead bodies. They're walking among 70 shuhada from a sahaba. Indeed, what a calamity, what a disaster. Even in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal described it and said, Awalamma asabatkum musiba. Allah described this scene. As a calamity upon the believers. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walking among 70 dead bodies. What is the guidance Allah gives him at that very moment that will save him from hopelessness and despair? This same ayah, I want you to draw a parallel. There is nothing different today. If we're not walking among 70 dead bodies, we are walking among 40,000 plus dead bodies, shuhada bi'ithnillah. The very same ayat that would comfort the heart of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he walks among 70 companions that are martyred, are the very same ayat that are going to guide us and bring us immense hope and relief when we are walking in nothing different except the number 40,000 plus dead bodies. These ayat are going to straighten up the heart of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's going to give him a road map to the victory of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, وَكَأَيِّمْ مِن نَبِيٍ قَاتَلَ مَعَهُ رِبِّيُّونَ كَثِيرٍ فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ 
وما ضعفوا وما استكانوا والله يحب الصابرين. That's the first ayah. And this ayah is going to rectify the heart. Listen to what Allah says. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions, and to us as well today, because these are ayat in the Quran, their guidance is timeless up until this day. Allah said to him, and how many prophets were killed alongside them, Ribbiyun, Ribbiyun, pious, righteous scholars and believers that were fighting alongside these prophets and noble messengers. The very beginning of the ayah comforts in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, telling him, you're not the first one to experience this calamity. Way before you, many of your brothers, your prophets, many of your brothers who were prophets and messengers were killed. They were killed in an unjust manner in an oppressive manner Allah Azza wa said wa ka'ayyin the word wa ka'ayyin implies an abundance when it's translated we say and how many times has this happened in history time and time again but here's the thing Allah says about all those prophets and all those righteous believers that endured this hardship and suffering and calamity, he said about them three things that he negated from them that they never fell into. Allah said, فَمَا وَهَنُوا فَمَا وَهَنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ He said, their hearts never became weak. Their hearts never became weak. That's the first thing you and I as a believer at this very current time should make sure that we don't fall in. We don't want weak hearts. What is a weak heart? What is a weak heart during this time? A weak heart is for a believer to begin to doubt the ability of Allah. When you doubt the mercy of Allah, when you doubt the power of Allah, when you doubt the presence of Allah, and the mercy of Allah, your heart is becoming weak, bit by bit. When you say, where is Allah in all of this? When you say, where is the mercy of Allah? When you say, where is the justice of Allah? When you say, where? But does Allah exist? If Allah existed, why is He allowing what is happening to happen every single day non-stop for nine months now? Where is Allah? The more you ask this, and the more your heart falls for these doubts, your heart is becoming weaker and weaker and weaker, and that's the first thing Allah negated. That despite the intense struggle and calamity these prophets and messengers faced, and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now is facing on the battle of Uhud, Allah would say the first thing they would never ever fall into this becoming weak. So what does it mean if the heart did not become weak? It became strong. And it increased in its strength. So I ask the question, how can the heart be strong in the midst of a calamity? And how can it get stronger and stronger? How? Is there something that we should shift our understanding and correct our understanding to increase our iman and strengthen it despite the calamity we see and we face? Yes, of course. Of course. What is this that strengthens the heart and the faith during this time? Allah Azza wa Jalla said, and I take you to an ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابِ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا Allah Azza wa Jal, He speaks about the believers when they faced the army, Quraysh, when they came from Mecca to al Madina and they wanted to annihilate and destroy the believers in al Madina, And they were 10,000 Al-Ahzab. And that's the famous battle known as Ma'rakat Al-Khandaq, the battle of the trench. 10,000 of them came and they arrived to al Madina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this scenario. He says, 
اهلا 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 بالشيخ السلام عليكم كيف الاحوال كيف صحتك الله عز وجل he describes this situation and he says ولما راى المؤمنون الاحزاب when the believers saw the enemy arriving to the doorsteps of al madina you know what the believers said to one another قالوا هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله they looked at each other and they were scared and they were afraid and they were terrified to the point where Allah Azza wa Jal describes that the heart has almost reached the throat وبلغت القلوب والحناجر out of fear Allah Azza wa Jal said that the believers would look at each other and they said هذا ما وعدنا الله ورسوله this is exactly what Allah and his messenger promised وصدق الله ورسوله and Allah and his messenger has spoken the truth Allah Azza wa Jal then said وَمَا زَادَهُمْ إِلَّا إِيمَانًا وَتَسْلِيمًا and that calamity only increased them in faith and in submission Allahu Akbar how? But the calamity is at the door they're facing death right now how can this situation elevate their iman and increase their submission to Allah? Brothers and sisters in Islam, it's not the calamity itself that increased their iman. It is the fact that they saw Allah's promise come to life. Didn't Allah promise in the Quran? And he said in Surah Al-Baqarah, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا Didn't Allah already promise? And he said, Am hasibtum, did you people, did you believers who say la ilaha illallah, did you assume that you're going to enter the paradise and not be affected and not be afflicted by calamities that were afflicted by those before you of poverty and hunger and war and famine and they were shaken up by these calamities to the point where even the messenger among them would say mata nasrullah Imagine a prophet among his people saying, Mata Nasrullah. Allah would respond, Allah inna Nasrullah qareeb. So now, brothers and sisters in Islam, when we see the enemy of Allah coming together, coming together, attacking the Muslims physically, ideologically, and on every front, the believer is supposed to say, We're supposed to say to each other, Hada ma wa'adana Allah wa rasuluh. So what are you surprised about? What are you shocked about? This is what Allah and His Messenger promised. We say to each other, Sadaq Allah wa Rasuluh. Allah and His Messenger indeed have spoken the truth. And this is why we see what is unfolding. And there are wisdoms for this. Beyond our understanding, beyond our intellect, we don't understand. What is the wisdom behind what is unfolding globally? Allahu Alam. But definitely there are certain wisdoms that we know. One, for Allah Azza wa Jal to hand select and hand pick shuhada among an ummah. And that's a virtue for us as a ummah. That's a virtue for us. Those that are killed and those that are murdered in an unjust manner in this way, we believe they are shuhada and the Rabbim yurzaqoon. Falhamdulillah. Also, from the wisdoms that are apparent and seen to everyone, how much goodness came from the darkness that is happening there? How many have embraced Islam? How has the world opinion about Islam changed? How many have began to research about Islam? How many have been introduced to Islam? And what it has of beautiful meanings and teachings and understanding? Look, you have the worst of disbelievers that are seeing Islam is the solution to mankind and its problems. Isn't that something good? Isn't that a positive and a benefit? Allah works in His way. And upon the believer is to زادهم إيمانا وتسليما We submit to whatever Allah Azza wa Jal's wisdom and knowledge is. So the first thing is they never fell into الوهن which is weakness of the heart. Rather the heart increases in its strength. And I tell you something very important. For those that continue to question and ask, where is Allah? Where is Allah? Is He present? Is He seeing what's happening? This is a dangerous statement. 
and it is rampant among the tongues of ignorant youth. How do we cure that? I'm going to tell you something that inshallah you'll never forget. Who can tell me which surah in the Quran documented a genocide? It's a surah of one page. Who can tell us what it is? Fadda. Huh? Surah Al-Buruj. Surah Al-Buruj, for those who don't know, it documented a genocide. A king genocided his people, 20,000 of them, dug trenches, burnt them all alive because of them saying, La ilaha illallah. But I want to take you to something unique. You see, this surah that documented a genocide, if you lived at that time, and if you were ignorant, you'd ask the same questions. Where is Allah? Is Allah present? Can he see all this? But this is the amazing fact. In the very same surah that documents a genocide against the believers, Allah will mention his names and attributes that are most doubted. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, لَهُ الَّذِي لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ in the page that documented a genocide, Allah Azza wa Jal said, I am witness to all things. That is the name of Allah that is doubted in the midst of a calamity and a genocide. And that's the name Allah will highlight. In the very same surah that documents a genocide, Allah Azza wa Jal said, In rabbika la shadeed. The seizing and the punishment of your Lord is intense. In the very same surah, Allah would say, Fa'alun lima yurid. He does whatever he wants. In the very same surah, he said, Wallahu min wara'im muhiyat. Allah is behind them, encompassing them, knows everything about what is happening. The very same names and attributes you will doubt about Allah are the very same names and attributes that are highlighted in Surah Al-Buruj that documented a genocide. For you and I to learn that Allah is shaheed. And فعال لما يريد أن من ورائهم محيط أن الذي له ملك السماوات والأرض الله أكبر فما وهنوا the heart should never be weakened وما ضعفوا الله says and the body never became weak but you notice how Allah said that their hearts did not become weak then He said their body did not become weak He mentioned the heart and the soul before He mentioned the body and don't you hear nowadays that they say this battle is a battle of the hearts and minds. Because if your heart and your mind is correct and strong, your body becomes strong. And even this is in uh, psychology, they mention, if you don't look after your mental health, it affects your physical health. So Allah Azza wa Jal said their heart was strong, as a result their body was strong in continuing to pursue after the enemy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, وَمَسْتَكَانُوا And the third thing they did not fall into, they did not surrender and give up to the enemy. And I tell you something, every plan that the enemy of Allah proposes as a solution, we are not allowed to accept it. For indeed accepting it is surrender and defeat. And the believer does not fall in this. So we will continue to fight for the rights of our brothers and sisters. And we will continue to fight seeking justice for their blood. Allah Azza wa Jalla at the end, He said, Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed loves the patient. Because this requires immense patience from you and I. Well, finally, we're coming to the last ayah, which is the road plan, the action plan. How do we achieve victory? Brothers and sisters in Islam. A sahaba are walking among 70 dead bodies on the day of Uhud. You know what's the dua they make as they're walking? Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, وَمَا كَانَ قَوْلَهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَإِسْرَافَنَا فِي أَمْرِنَا Now I want you to imagine this. Sahaba are walking among 70 dead bodies and they say, our Lord, Allah says their words were, and they said nothing except these words, our Lord. Forgive our sins and our wrongdoings. Forgive our minor sins, our major sins. I ask you a question. How can you think of sins when you're walking among dead bodies? When you have a very close relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal, you will understand that the greatest obstacle between us and victory are our sins. 
So the first thing they make in their dua, they say, Allah, forgive our sins, the minor and the major. Then they say, وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا Grant us steadfastness in our feet, firmness in our feet upon your commands and upon your laws. Then at the end they said, وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ And grant us victory against the disbelievers. Brothers and sisters in Islam, do you notice the order? The first thing that's on their mind, our Lord, forgive our sins. Number two, grant us steadfastness upon your deen. Number three, grant us victory against the enemy. That's the last worry. Don't ever be worried and don't be concerned about the defeat of the enemy. For Allah Azza wa Jal has already promised this. Don't worry too much about that. That Allah Azza wa Jal can do like he did with the previous nations. A bit of water in the nose of Fir'aun and his army and he drowned two million of them. Very simple for Allah Azza wa Jal to destroy the enemy. Qarun, just a bit of shake of the earth and he was destroyed. Ad, just a strong wind and they were all finished and gone. Usalih, Thamud, the same thing. Qawm Lut, very easy, just Jibreel comes, not 600 wings, one wing. Picked them up and turned them off and they were all gone. Very simple for Allah to destroy the rebelling nation. So don't, the nation, don't worry about that. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, وَمَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ مِنْ جُنْدٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمَا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِينَ Allah Azza wa Jalla spoke about rebellious nation that killed their prophet. He said, we didn't even send an army from the sky. No special arrangement. وَمَا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِينَ And we weren't going to send anything. Doesn't deserve anyone to come down. The job can be done with the word kun. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, إِنْ كَانَتْ إِلَّا صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَةً فَإِذَا هُمْ خَامِدُونَ Jibreel alayhi salam was sent. He came to the gate of the community and he screamed one loud scream and they were all khamidun. You know, khamidun, lifeless, dead bodies in an instant. Allah Azza wa Jal can do that. You don't worry about that. You worry about the beginning, which is, رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَإِسْرَافَنَا فِي أَمْرِنَا Wallahi, my brothers and sisters in Islam, there is no victory as long as our sins are publicized for everyone to see. When I speak about sins, I'm talking about the public sins, not the private sins. Pay attention. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said something very important. He said, if 1,000 believers were all to sin in private, Allah will give them victory against their enemy. But if 1,000 believers... 999 of them did not sin in private nor in public, but only one sinned in public, Allah will not give them victory. If we speak about the public sins in Ummat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam today, wallahi, you'd put your head down in shame and in embarrassment. It has reached catastrophic levels in Ummat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What are we going to talk about? What kind of sins can I speak and I expose and talk about today that is rampant among the young Muslim? Huh? From haircuts that imitate the rebellious disbelievers. From the dress code that is not adhered to correctly. From the smoking, washisha, wal argila, and drugs and drug dealing. From a zina and people casually walking in the banks and signing riba contracts and not caring. Ya khwani wallahi, the point is that even as a da'i, at times I hesitate. Should I even speak about this sin or not? If I speak about the sin, how would people react? How would they respond? Are they going to criticize me or will they cancel me in society? Look how much the sin has reached in Ummat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a da'i himself is not comfortable anymore. To condemn the evil among the people, fearing what are people going to say? Show what the shaytan has done. Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah he mentioned one of the tricks of a shaytan is to evil whisper in the believers that they abandon in joining the good and forbidding the evil with the excuse of, oh, be kind to people and let's bring them in. Show the deception that has happened. So brothers and sisters in Islam, 
اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا each and every single one of us you have to look into yourself what sins do you have in your life you start and work on eliminating them out of your life one after the other and if you do what you have to do and your brother next to you does what he has to do and i do what i have to do and everyone does what they have to do wallah wa uqsimu billah the victory of allah azza wa jalla is on the way and don't belittle this concept better than you and i as sahaba alongside them and nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one disobedience in the battle of badr uhud one one disobedience 35 companions on a mountain decided to disobey the message of rasulullah and they came down just one one only one and the tables would turn and that's when the calamity came all of them asabatkum musiba u 70 companions killed one nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam almost killed some sahaba ran away in chaos and one 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 public sin one public disobedience how much do we have among us seek istighfar tawba that's why shaykh al islam ibn taymiyyah rahimahullah said the most important dua is al istighfar you know that the most important dua you will ever make is allahumma ighfir li oh allah forgive me if allah forgave you and your sins are removed we're on our way to victory bi idhnillah ta'ala i'm going to end my talk here and we're going to uh move to our dear sheikh our beloved sheikh sheikh abu taymiyah even though he is younger than me by a few years except that i will let out a secret and that is that i'm a secret admirer of the sheikh <laughs> and i've benefited a lot from his work we ask allah azza wa jal to preserve him to protect him and to make him uh, a means of spreading al islam wherever he may be jazakallah khair tafaddal sheikh assalamu alaykum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بعث الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعنا الله بإذنه والسراج منيرا والله I was going to say something about Sheikh Abu Bakr but he preceded me in it don't listen to anything that he said right that's only from his tawadu from his humility it reminded me of a question that was posed to the uncle of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم العباس بن عبد المطلب he was asked, who's older, you or the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? He said, huwa akbaru minni wa ana walidtu qablah. He's older than me, but I was born before him, right? So this is from the tawadu of the Shaykh. Wallahi, as I was listening to the Shaykh, I always get inspired by Shaykh Abu Bakr. I was going to say, radiyallahu anhu. Yani, may Allah be pleased with him anyway. Shaykh Abu Bakr, may Allah Azza wa Jal preserve him. When it comes to connecting the reality on the ground with the greatest of speeches, and that is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Some of you guys may remember, I uploaded a video of his on my YouTube channel a couple of years ago. I was very, very active in speaking about that which is extremely colorful, right? Very, very active. The rainbow has been hijacked, right? And then... I listened to a lecture of his, how he connected the colorful things with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its relatability, the relevance and whatever have you. It was so amazing, so wonderfully structured, better than anything that I ever covered pertaining to that which is colorful. And then I uploaded it onto my channel. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. Honestly, I don't want to praise him to his face. I can hear him mumbling, right? I really don't. Wallahi, but brothers and sisters, whenever I visit different countries and I travel internationally and I know the people are going to be attending, I like to connect them to their local shiuch. Wallahi, you have amongst the individuals that you can go back to when it comes to fatawa, when it comes to relevance, when it comes to relatability, when it comes to the reality on the ground. You are, wallahi, spoiled for choice. Honestly, you are. Benefit from your mashayikh. Don't just come to the masjid. When an international speaker comes, why? Because you see him on TikTok all the time. I don't even have a TikTok account, brothers and sisters. Right? You have amongst you people that can benefit you immensely. Be connected with them. Study with them regularly. And also Sheikh Badhun. I think that's how you mentioned his name. Or did I get it wrong? 
Bahdun. Bahdun. Yeah? You have mashayikh amongst you that you can benefit immensely from. May Allah Azza wa bless you all. My brothers and my sisters, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to keep it short. As I was listening to the Shaykh, I benefited immensely and he nicked some of my ideas. Right? May Allah Azza wa bless him. I want to, inshallah ta'ala, speak about five acts that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned right at the end of a kitab called Al-Furusiyyatu al muhammadiyah which refers to the courage and heroism exemplified by the Muhammadi character in Islam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was a role model in just about every aspect of life. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, right at the end of this book, he says, وَنَخْتِمُ هَذَا الْكِتَابَ بِآيَةٍ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى جَمَعَ فِيهَا تَدْبِيرَ الْحُرُوفِ بِأَحْسَنَ تَدْبِيرِ He says, as we conclude this book, we will finish off with a verse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book, which encapsulates the best arrangement of letters and meanings. Which verse are we referring to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said? And every single one of us, my brothers and my sisters, needs to memorize this verse, especially right now, my brothers and my sisters. Wallahi, the heart bleeds. We listen to our Shaykh speak about Surah Al-Buruj that documented a genocide. And then you have our brothers and sisters who are going through that genocide. They are being butchered and they're being massacred right before our eyes. And our hands are tied. Right. But as we always mention, my brothers and my sisters, our Palestinian brothers and sisters have already won. They have already acquired victory. And that is because they either depart from this world as shuhada, insha'Allah. وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ shuhada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses them as the martyrs. Right. And... If they live on, they will live as heroes. They will live as heroes. The world has already witnessed it, my brothers and my sisters. The boy in the king that the Sheikh was speaking about, Surat Buruj, right? He lost his life, but what came out of that, my brothers and my sisters? So many of them embracing Al Islam, right? Wallahi reminded me of all of these non Muslims that are holding up the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're holding up the Mus'haf and saying, we are going to read it. It was yesterday that I received a video of a man that read the whole Qur'an. Some of you may have seen this video. He read the whole Qur'an in 18 hours. Right? He's a non-Muslim and he records it. Right? From beginning to end, he read the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. There are people that are picking up the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Wanting to know where is this forbearance, this patience, this faith, this inspiration. Where is it coming from? When you see a man, my brothers and my sisters, who's just lost everything. Standing in the hospital saying, why are you guys upset? Our mota, right? Our brothers, our sisters, our children have departed from this world. They are in al jinnah. What is there to be upset about? Where is this faith, this inspiration coming from? Wallahi reminded me of the boy in the king. This situation here that we're currently seeing, they have already won, my brothers and my sisters. Victory always doesn't look glittery and glamorous. They were holding a flag and khalas. Right? 400% increase across Europe, my brothers and my sisters, when it comes to conversions. 400% increase. Right? When Allah Azza wa talks about إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا Fatih, Victory You will see the people entering into Al-Islam Right? Flooding into the religion of Al-Islam Isn't this what we're seeing? Isn't this a type of victory, my brothers and my sisters? Everything happens for a reason It may break our hearts, my brothers and my sisters But you can put a positive spin on everything. And this is exactly what we're seeing. I don't want to digress, my brothers and my sisters. 
But he mentioned this verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about when the resistance goes out to war. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu idha laqeetum fi'atan fathbutu wa dhkuru allaha kathiran la'allakum tuflihun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, you who believe, when you run into the enemy, فَذْبُتُوا بِفَمْ وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you may be successful. Allah then says, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ be obedient to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah then says, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا Don't start arguing, engaging in disputations and argumentations. This will cause you to fail. فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ وَاصْبِرُوا Right? Be patient. Indeed, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is with those that are patient. Five things, my brothers and my sisters, that he mentions. If you apply these five things, my brothers and my sisters, فَهَذِهِ خَمْسَةُ أَشْيَاءَ تُبْتَنَا عَلَيْهَا قُبَّةُ النَّصَرِ He says, this consists of five things upon which the dome of victory is built on, he says. Number one, my brothers and my sisters, الثبات, to remain steadfast. I don't want to go into the lecture that I gave my brothers and my sisters in the main event that we did a couple of days ago called the awakening where we spoke about a thabat especially at the end of times this is the first component that he's mentioning I'm not going to sit here my brothers and my sisters and talk as if holding on to your religion at the end of times is easy it's not wallah it's not the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, "Inna min waraikum ayyam al-sabr, al-qabidu ala dini kal-qabidu ala al-jamar." Ahead of you are days where you need to be very patient. Holding on to your religion is like holding on to hot coal. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked about the amil, the one who remains steadfast, who does righteous deeds in times like this when the society has become so filthy. People are engaging in abhorrent, despicable acts. You see, everything's so sexualized. It's hard, my brothers and my sisters, it's not easy. Right? So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who does acts of worship now, he gets the reward of 50. And then the companions asked, 50 of us or 50 of them? He said, 50 of you. The 50 companions, my brothers and my sisters, who are doing righteous deeds, you will get their reward. And then I quoted some other narrations as well. Like at the end of times, my brothers and my sisters, يَتَسَافَدُونَ تَسَافُدَ الْحُمُرْ أَوْ يَتَهَارَجُونَ تَهَارُجَ الْحَمِيرْ Where they're going to be on top of one another, publicizing their sexual acts. Whether it may be publicly on the roads, and that which we see online, my brothers and my sisters, it also applies here. Publicly, openly, with no shyness, no taraddud, no hesitation. And then I narrated that hadith, my brothers and my sisters. Right? That at the end of times, they're going to be carrying out filth on the roads, right? And the best of them, the best of them is the one who says, Can you please go to the side? Can you please just get out the way? Imagine that. Even when you look at the wording, it's not direct or outright condemnation. Because it seems like this has become so excessive. The people have become exhausted of condemning so much filth. It's become so normalized. Right? The best of them is the one that says, get out of the way. And then the narration states, that person who does this is like Abu Bakr and Umar amongst you. Subhanallah. Right? It's like Abu Bakr and Umar upon, amongst you. The ahadith are many, my brothers and my sisters. al mutamassiku bi sunnati, the one who holds on to my sunnah, as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he gets the reward of a shaheed. He gets the reward of a martyr, my brothers and my sisters. It kills us, right? 
it kills us that which is happening to our brothers and sisters in Palestine, right? And then at times we say to ourselves, Wallahi, they've been chosen, man. They've been chosen to be from amongst the shuhada. We have an opportunity to do that as well. Our hands have been tied, right? But Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, doing acts of worship at this time, our hands haven't been tied. We've become so passionate in our temptations. Being dragged left, right and center. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, they're being tortured to practice their religion. They can't do that. Right? The companions before them, they were tortured. As the Shaykh mentioned, the Battle of Uhud, it was when the Messenger wasalam, helmet was smashed, his face was gashed, and his tooth was broken, just so we can have Al Islam on a plate. We have it so easy here, brothers and sisters, and then we don't hold on to our religion. Right? We can't do basic things. You want to be a shaheed? Here you go, my brothers and my sisters. The Messenger told us over 1400 years ago, hold on to my sunnah, do the right thing. And you will get the reward of the shaheed. Right? It was even made easier for us. At this time, Al ibadatu fil harjika hijratin ilayya. The way the rewards have been multiplied. Do ibadah, it is as if you are what? Making hijra to me. Making hijra to the Prophet is all you need to do is al ibadah in today's day and age. Al-thabat, al-thabat. Remaining firm, remaining steadfast. And remember this advice that Allah Azza wa Jal is giving to who? To those who are on the battlefield that are about to be waged war against by the enemy. Thani, second one, my brothers and my sisters. I hope you guys are memorizing it or writing it down. Katharatu dhikrihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. Right? Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. Doing dhikr and the shaykh touched on it. Right? Whether it may be istighfar, whether it may be constant repentance. Right? Because sins have a huge impact or not just us, my brothers and my sisters, the sinner, but also the people around us. Allah says in the Quran, Beware of a calamity that will come your way. It is not exclusive to the oppressor, only la. Once it comes, others will also end up getting affected. Not to give them a free pass to go and oppress our brothers and sisters, la. But we have to take a good look at ourselves when things start going wrong. I have to look at myself in the mirror. Maybe because of something that I've done, someone in Palestine is going to suffer. Right? It won't be exclusive to the oppressors, the suppressors, the aggravators, the aggressors. It's not just what going to affect them, it'll affect the people around you. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ الثالث my brothers and my sisters طَاعَتُهُ وَطَاعَتُ رَسُولِهِ To obey Allah and to obey His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم My brothers and my sisters Let me ask you all a question If you are playing outside or you are sitting or standing outside with your friends and your mother said Muhammad Abdullah Go and get the shopping. And you said to her, Mom, I'm busy. Would everyone here agree that this is disrespectful? That this is unacceptable? Mom's calling me out. She's saying to me, Muhammad. And I'm standing there saying, Mom, I'm busy. Right? And this may well be the case at times. We would all agree that this is disrespectful. My brothers and my sisters, have you ever, con- have you ever contemplated on what Ya Ayyuhalladheen Aminu means? Ya Ayyuhalladheen Aminu. Abdullah Mas'udi would say, radiyallahu ta'ala anu. When you hear Ya Ayyuhalladheen Aminu, make sure to lend it your ear. You're about to hear something extremely important that you will be commanded with. Or you will be prohibited about something that is extremely important. Make sure you pay attention. It's personal, my brothers and my sisters. You are a believer, I claim to have Iman, I'm being spoken to directly by Allah Azza wa Jal. And when I don't, my brothers and my sisters, you know what we're actually saying with our bodies, right, with our limbs? 
Ya Allah, I'm a little bit busy, right? I'll come back to you later. How do we feel, my brothers and my sisters? Just let this resonate for a moment. Think about it. Oh, you who believe, do this. Oh, you who believe, stay away from this. Allah says to you, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ zina. Don't come close to a zina. Who is the Quran talking to, my brothers and my sisters? Is it a bedtime story that was set down? Or is it a mandate for us to be able to navigate and maneuver? And for us to take away that which is best for us in this world and likewise the hereafter. We all agree that saying that to your mom is disrespectful. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى Far greater when it comes to Allah Azza wa Jal. If someone disrespected your Lord, my brothers and my sisters, you're going to flip the table. He's insulting Allah Azza wa Jal, right? What are we doing, my brothers and my sisters, when we hear these commandments and these prohibitions? Right? Isn't that a form of disrespect as well? And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? In a hadith we were told, and I want to mention this, إِنَّمَا مَثَلِي وَمَثَلُ أُمَّتِي كَرَجُلٍ يَسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا Right? فَجَعَلَتِ الْفَرَاشِ The like, the likeness of me and my ummah is like a man, my brothers and my sisters, who lit a fire. You're in the woods, you went camping, you lit a fire, right? What happens, my brothers and my sisters, fire? Who starts charging towards it? All the bugs and the insects. They're all running into it. Right? Right? And you start charging towards it as well. And I'm holding onto your lower garment. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what? Protecting us from that. And we're running into the hellfire. This is the care and the concern. And wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, sometimes we look at the commandments of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we think, 21st century, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't fall in line with my intellect. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, I keep saying this, my Instagram, Fitnagram, whatever you want to call it, is full. It is full with people's problems. And sometimes I just stop and I say, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us X, Y, and Z. Had they acted upon that, they wouldn't be in this hole that they're in. It's in our best interest. Wallahi, I was showing my little sister before I left. Some of the messages with the names taken out, so don't worry. She's at that teenage age, right? Look. Exactly what I told you. And whatever I told you, the Messenger Sallallahu told us. Look how heartbroken she is. Crying her eyes out to me. The sister who messages in. He made me all of these promises. He said he'll make me his Khadija. And vice versa. Sometimes the guy who's been broken. Right? Can't get away from her. Goes to sleep thinking or wakes up thinking about her. My family is telling me that I've lost weight. A brother's telling me this. Basic commandment. Right? You understand why Allah instructs you? Why Allah tells you X, Y, and Z? It's for your own best interest. As opposed to when you do the right thing. Right? My brothers and my sisters, we've accepted that we struggle to hear that which is happening outside. Can anyone hear? Can anyone hear? Hear that which is outside? No, you can't. Can anyone smell that which is being cooked inside of the mat'am? I don't know, maybe it's coming in, right? Huh? But we can't, generally speaking, right? Can anyone see that which is happening on the other side? You can't. If we've accepted that, why do we fail to accept that our intellects are limited as well? Our intellects are limited. As to what is right and what is wrong. It doesn't make sense to us. And then we wait, my brothers and my sisters, for a scientist to come out 2024 having discovered something. Oh, wow, right? He's saying that this is now not good for your health. Like I mentioned the other day, it's on just about every single news tabloid that not a single percentage of bacon or alcohol is good for you. In fact, it increases stomach cancer. Now, Al-An, Waqad Asayd Gabal. You're disobeying Allah. You need some kafir to come along, my brothers and my sisters, who 
has been enlightened by Allah Azza wa Jal. Now he's discovered that oh, I'm not going to believe in it. And a lot of cases are like that. Number three, my brothers and my sisters, I already mentioned number three. What was number one? Thabat. Number two, to remain firm was number one. Number two, remembering Allah Azza wa Jal much. Number three, obeying Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number four, اتفاق الكلمة وعدم التنازع الذي يوجب الفشل والوهن right Ibn Al-Qayyim رحمه الله تعالى he says my brothers and my sisters uniting our ranks and to refrain from argumentations and disputations this is only my brothers and my sisters going to weaken the ummah this is only my brothers and my sisters going to contribute to our downfall right I've been asked this question time and time again here in South Africa because I was in South Africa just before I came here, right? And wherever I go, what's the solution to all of these argumentations and disputations? Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, the concept of aqeedah is extremely important. The whole world runs on aqeedah. However, a lot of these disputations and argumentations that we see on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, right? From ignorant individuals, Wallahi la yusminu wa la yughli min ju'a. It is not going to bring about any benefit. And this is why I always say to brothers, and this is across the spectrum, across the spectrum. You want to argue about these things? Absolutely fine. You and the other person who has knowledge, go inside of a room, lock it, and fight in there. With everything that is happening, Wallahi, sometimes the most pettiest of discussions. Right? The most pettiest of discussions are happening. Right? And wallahi, people of knowledge on every side of the spectrum, they wouldn't behave like that. Go in that room, right? And reach a conclusion with regards to these issues. As for allowing it to spill out online, while so many are now entering into Islam, they've left whatever they were upon, and then they see the Muslims behaving like this. Wallahi, today, I just remembered right now, Sheikh Abu Ahmed sent me a 30 second clip of Guys shouting at each other on TikTok. <coughs> shouting at each other. They've got different beliefs, but they're shouting. And people are just laughing at them. Ammatun Nas are commenting as this is going on. LOL. And they're speaking about Deen. Shouting, literally shouting. Ibn Uthaymin, Fulan Ibn. They're screaming. Ya laysa hakada ya jama'ah. There are knowledgeable people on every side of the spectrum. They're very passionate about these things, right? Go into a room. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we engage in these things and we lack basic knowledge and we end up contributing and whatever have you. Like I said, these discussions are important, right? But we have to take into consideration the place and the time that we're doing it. It's a maqsad shari. It is from the objectives, in fact, the most greatest of objectives in our Sharia, in order to come together. And at times we have to come together when it comes to common issues. These differences and disagreements have always been around and will continue to be around. And I'm not saying it's not important at all. There's a place for it, right? But at times on common issues, like the ones that we are facing, all of us, they're not going to distinguish between this guy is this and this guy is a different type. They look at us as Muslims. When the chicken comes home to roost, wallahi, all of us have a problem. Ibn Taymiyyah says, مِنَ الْقَوَاعِدِ الْعَظِيمَ الَّتِي هِي مِنْ جِمَاعُ الدِّينِ Right? إِصْلَاحُ ذَاتِ الْبَيْنِ وَاجْتِمَاعُ الْكَلِمَةِ وَتَأْلِيفُ الْقُلُوبِ Bringing the hearts together. Right? Bringing the hearts together. Looking for ways to remove this disunity. It's an active cause. How many are actually working towards it? I'll tell you guys something about Shaykh Hussain Taymi, rahimahullah ta'ala, who passed away in the year 728. Ibn Taymi, ta'ala, he said that there was a time when the Hanbalites and the Ash'aris, they were going at war with one another. And he would say, Ana kuntu min a'zamihim. From the greatest of those who would go out his way to try and reduce the issues between them. And he has a doctrine, by the way. He believes 
what he believes to be correct. And he would sit down having civilized conversations that are productive. Wallahi, I believe if the Messenger وسلم, was alive and he saw the way some are behaving on TikTok and likewise Twitter, he would be disgusted. Absolutely disgusted. And now compare that to how Ibn Taymiyyah would go about having these conversations. And they may well disagree. But look at the way he is approaching the situation. The discussions in order to minimize. Right? Especially right now. When we are being targeted from every direction. Right? From every direction, my brothers and my sisters. Ism this, schism that. Right? The universities have become breeding grounds for kufr and shirk. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, our faith is under threat. I'm going to finish off. I know I'm running out of time. And number five, my brothers and my sisters, he says, مَلَاكُ ذَلِكَ كُلُّهُ وَقِوَامُهُ وَأَسَاسُهُ وَهُوَ الصَّبْرُ he said, the key to all of this, its foundation and essence, is patience. Right? It's to be patient in these times. And patience, my brothers and my sisters, is one of the best definitions that I came across. It's when Ibn al-Qayyim, ta'ala, he says, حَبْسُ النَّفْسِ عَنِ التَّسَخُّطِ بِالْمَقْدُورِ وَحَبْسُ اللِّسَانِ عَنِ الشَّكْوَى right? وَحَبْسُ الْجَوَارِ عَنِ الْمَعَاصِي when things take place, my brothers and my sisters, not to be raging at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, take this from me and I'm going to be releasing a lecture on my YouTube channel, inshallah ta'ala, how to navigate around evil. It'll come out soon. One of the biggest reasons as to why people may leave the religion and become atheists is because they don't understand the concept of that which is evil that takes place. Why is all of this taking place? Why is it happening to me? Are you better than the Prophet وسلم, who lost six out of his seven children in his lifetime? Who went through hardships after hardships after hardships? My brothers, my readers here. Right? A sabr in times like this. Doing the right thing. Holding yourself back. Because one wrong move may well be the reason, my brothers and my sisters. Right? That you end up being the reason why Islam is painted in a negative way. And you have to take that into consideration. It's not always emotions. Right? Our emotions need to be in line with the Sharia. Are you brothers and sisters with me? It needs to be in line with the Sharia. So he said not to become enraged at that which Allah Azra has decreed. And then to also refrain your tongue from constantly complaining. Right? You want to complain, you want to cry your eyes out and your heart. Isn't this exactly what Yaqub done when he lost his first and his second child? He began complaining, crying out to Allah. Seeking his help. Right? It hurts us right now, which is happening. Wake up in the last third of the night and cry your eyes out and make dua for those who are being oppressed. And then last but not least, وَحَبْسُ الْجَوَارِحِ to hold back your limbs, my brothers and my sisters, from haram. Right? Two wrongs don't make a right. Earlier I was telling the brothers in the podcast, which is on a podcast right now. One time I came across a brother who, whose sister was mistreated by a man. Right? He used and abused her. Used her for haram. And you know, he said, you know what? I'm, I know his sister. I'm going to go and do haram with her and then dump her. This is not patience. Right? Yes, you're burning, you're upset. But there's a way to go about it. Right? To conclude, my brothers and my sisters. To conclude. He says, Right? This consists of five things upon which the dome of victory is built on. These five things. And look what he says. ومتى زالت أو بعضها زال من النصر بحسب ما نقص منها. He says, when you find 
parts of that which we just spoke about, these five things diminishing or decreasing, in accordance to that, you will see the victory being affected. And then he says, وَإِذَا اجْتَمَعَتْ قَوَى بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا وَصَارَ لَهَا أَثْرٌ عَظِيمٌ فِي النَّصْرِ وَلَمَّا اجْتَمَعَتْ فِي الصَّحَابَةِ لَمْ تَقُمْ لَهُمْ أُمَّةٌ مِنَ الْأُمَمِ He says, the more you have from amongst the five things that we spoke about, the more, my brothers and my sisters, you'll be able to acquire that victory that you're looking for. And then he says, these five things were present within the companions. لَمْ تَقُمْ لَهُمْ أُمَّةٌ مِنَ الْأُمَمِ No nation stood against them when they were able to apply these five things. This is the companions, my brothers and my sisters. وَفَتَحُ الدُّنْيَا وَدَانَتْ لَهُمُ الْعِبَادُ وَالْبِلَادِ They were able to conquer the world. The servants and the lands submitted to them. وَلَمَّا تَفَرَّقَتْ فِي مَنْ بَعْدَهُمْ وَضَعُفَتْ آلَ الْأَمْرُ إِلَى مَا آلَ However, my brothers and my sister, when they split up and disunited, right? After the companions, their state weakened, leading to what it eventually became. It upsets us, my brothers and my sisters, right? Two billion Muslims. Two billion Muslims, my brothers and my sisters. Right? Yet we are so weak. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, and the Shaykh alluded to it, إِذَا تَبَايَعْتُمْ بِالْعِينَةِ وَأَخَذْتُمْ أَذْنَابِ الْبَقَرِ وَرَضِيتُمْ بِالزَّرْعِ وَتَرَكْتُمُ الْجِهَادِ سَلَّطَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ ذُلًّا لَا يَنْزِعُ عَنْكُمْ حَتَّى تَرْجِعُ إِلَى دِينِكُمْ When you start dealing with Ina, which is a type of riba, riba isn't my brothers and my sisters just giving out a loan and asking for more. Riba is so much more than that. You have riba duyun wa riba al buyu' Riba when it comes to loans and riba when it comes to transactions. And many are unaware of the second type. And we engage in it and we don't realize and we feed haram to our children and family. Did you know my brothers and my sister, Umar Khattab radiallahu ta'ala would say, لا يبع في سوقنا إلا من تفقه في الدين. One shouldn't trade and transact in our markets until he learns his religion. Because you're going to drag haram to the markets. So anyways, going back to what I was saying, once they start dealing with a riba, and they begin to chase after the tails of cows, and they become satisfied with their land. يعني the dunya. This is at the forefront of their thinking. He wakes up, the first thing on his mind is, none other but dunya. Everything else is secondary. When I find time, that's when I'm going to worship Allah. You wait for me, O oh Allah. وَتَرَكْتُمُ الْجِهَادَ And you leave of al-jihad. My brothers and sisters, I have to mention the disclaimer here. Just in case we have someone here that works for the Daily Mail and wants to take out of context what I'm about to say. Right? Jihad is part of our religion. It is a concept, however, I'm not here trying to recruit for ISIS. Right? It's a concept in our religion. So I'm not going to be apologetic. It has rules and it has regulations. Don't these kuffar, my brothers and my sisters, who massacre and butcher our Muslim brothers and sisters, always say, go and kill them? Go and carpet bomb them? Right? They'll clip out verses such as, when Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَاخْتُلُوهُمْ حَيْثُ وَجَدْتُمُوهُمْ Kill them wherever you find them. And they'll say, oh look, you Muslimics. Right? Kill them wherever you find it, which has been blown out of context. It has a context. Think about it, my brothers and sisters, logically. Whenever there is war, what is each army general going to say to one another? Now, if you see him, just ask him a couple of questions, right? If that was really the case, my brothers and my sisters, we have two billion Muslims, why aren't they going around butchering the non Muslims? Because it's been taken out of context. Does that make sense? So he has rules and regulations. سَلَّطَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ ذُلًّا لَا يَنْزِعُ عَنْكُمْ حَتَّى تَرْجِعُ إِلَى دِينِكُمْ Allah will send down upon you humiliation. He will not remove this humiliation until you come back to your religion. These four things that were mentioned in the hadith, right? They don't apply it properly. ذُل Humiliation will be sent down upon them. 
If I can just conclude with the statement of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, who passed away, by the way, in the year 728. So he doesn't have a horse in the race. 30 more seconds. I should have made everyone stand up. I wanted to tell you all to stand up, do star jumps and sit back down. But... Gen Z's brothers. Huh? Low attention span. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala says, فَمَنْ تَرَكَ الْجِهَادَ عَذَّبَهُ اللَّهُ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا بِالذُّلِّ وَغَيْرِهِ Whoever leaves of the resistance, Allah Azza wa Jal will punish him with a very painful punishment. بِالذُّلْ Humiliation and other than it. وَنَزَعَ الْأَمْرَ مِنْهُ فَأَعْطَاهُ لِغَيْرِهِ Allah Azza wa Jal will strip authority of him and he'll give it to someone else. فَإِنَّ هَذَا الدِّينَ لِمَنْ ذَبَّ عَنْهُ This religion belongs to those who defend it. Right? And then he says, وَمَتَى جَاهَدَتِ الْأُمَّةُ عَدُوَّهَا أَلَّفَ اللَّهُ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهَا And when the Muslims, my brothers and my sisters, they carry out the resistance accordingly, right? Against their enemies, Allah Azza wa Jalla will bring their hearts close. وَإِنْ تَرَكَتِ الْجِهَادِ شُغِلَ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا and when they leave that off, my brothers and my sisters, they will become busy with themselves. Elsewhere, he says, my brothers and my sisters, and you can perhaps put this into context with what is happening around us. Right. He says, when the people, now my brothers and my sisters, they became busy with that which is right, Resisting in the way of Allah, Allah brought their hearts together. However, فَإِذَا تَرَكَ النَّاسُ When the people leave that off, my brothers and my sisters, فَقَدْ يَبْتَلِيهِمُ اللَّهُ بِأَنْ يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَهُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ حَتَّى تَقَعَ بَيْنَهُمُ الْفِتْنَةُ كَمَا هُوَ الْوَاقِعُ And when they don't do that, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and my sisters, will cause enmity now to become widespread amongst them. Right? And fitna, as you see, taking place now. He's saying this, my brothers and sisters, 700 plus years ago. 700 plus years ago. How about now, my brothers and sisters? Right. I'm done there, my brothers and sisters. I ask Allah Azza to benefit us from what we had. And to make us from those, my brothers and my sisters, who when they hear the reminder, they act upon it. Right? Zakum Allah khair, honestly, for packing out the house of Allah Azza wa Jal. I think before we start this next segment, I have a suggestion that everyone stands up and they do star jumps. The halal ones, huh? And then you sit back down, inshallah ta'ala, because I know it's hard to be sitting all this time. And then we can start the Q&A, inshallah ta'ala. All of Islam, and this is a testament to our love that we pack the house of Allah to listen to the kalam of Allah and explanations of the kalam of Allah. How can we... Uh, serve Islam, especially in, in the West or in Australia, in Melbourne, where we find ourselves. Sheikh Abu Bakr is going to go first because he's older. <laughs> <laughs> Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu is when he said, Atani Jibreel fa'amarani an uqaddim ala kabir. Jibreel came to me and he instructed me to give presents to those who are older. Mashallah. So Sheikh is going to go ahead, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. I think you all heard the, heard the question. I'll repeat it for those that did not hear it or didn't, didn't catch what the question was. Brother asked a very good question, and I think this is a question that is supposed to be on the minds of each and every single one of us, and that is how can the young Muslim serve the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can he be productive? In Ummat al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen, my brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah azza wa jal, he said, Ya ayyuha al ladhina amanu, kunu ansar Allah. Kama qala Isa ibn Maryam al hawariyeen, man ansari ila Allah. Allah azza wa jal, he said, O you who believe, and remember what the Shaykh told us, when Allah azza wa jal says, O you who believe, pay careful attention. In this case here, Allah Azza wa Jal is commanding us and instructing us for something good and beneficial for us. He said, Kunu ansar Allah. Kunu ansar lillah. 
Be of those who give victory to the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Be of those who support the deen of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, you all know that the second question in the grave is Ma Deenuk. What is your religion? What is the answer? Al Islam. What have you done for Al Islam? For you and I to effortlessly say to the angel, Al Islam is my religion. What's your contribution to Al Islam? What was your service to Al Islam? You see, on the day of judgment, companions will come and they have all engaged in service to ad deen Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu served ad deen One of his many projects is that he memorized approximately 5,000 ahadith for this ummah. He'll come on the day of judgment, Oh Allah, this is what I did for your deen, preserved 5,000 ahadith. You know, Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu from the many things he did, He'll come on the day of judgment, Ya Allah, I served your Prophet for 10 years, I was at his feet doing what he wants. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu will come and he'll say, Oh Allah, this month's my wealth, I spent it all for this deen and for the cause of this deen, protecting it and uprising this deen. You know, Uthman radiallahu anhu, the same thing. Some companions will come carrying their limbs, Oh Allah, I gave this for your sake. The prophets are going to come and they'll say, Oh Allah, every second and every day of my life was for your cause. And so that I propagate the truth and the spread the message that you delivered to me. And that you're going to come on the day of judgment. What do you have in your hands? What are you going to present? Brothers and sisters in Islam, and Islam, I want you to think of, you know, when we come to our salat and then everyone stands and then there's gaps in the line. And then what happens to the people? They begin to fill in the gaps, right? And you know that filling in the gap has immense reward. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man wasala saffan wasalahu Allah. Whoever fills in the gap, fills it in, Allah azza wa jal will continue his mercy upon him. He'll connect him with his mercy. In another hadith authenticated by some ulama, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, whoever fills in the gap, Allah will build a house for him in the paradise. That's just two steps you take to fill in a gap. But I want it now to think bigger than this. You know, in Ummat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Islam, we have a lot of gaps that are empty. There's a lot of gaps that are empty that need to be filled. And the young youth have a lot of skill have a lot of knowledge, have a lot of expertise in certain fields. So you should be looking into the skill that Allah gave you and asking yourself, how can I serve a deen? How can I serve deen Allah Azza wa Jal? What has Allah blessed me with that I can serve Allah's deen through it? Brothers and sisters in Islam, not everyone will become a scholar. Not everyone will be able to sit and to deliver a lecture. And this is not the only way to serve the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Not everyone has the capacity for that. To learn the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal and to excel in this will take many years and it requires immense effort and sacrifice from your end. Not everyone can do this and you've got to be honest with yourself. Those that can, Bismillah, that's your greatest way in how to serve the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Go and invest in yourself and learn your deen and come and deliver it to mankind and to the people. Some of us are wealthy businessmen. We're very good at making wealth. Serve the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal with your wealth. Some of us have very good computer skills. And that plays a huge role in serving the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, especially in this day and age. See what your skill is. Team up with someone, with a local masjid. See how you're going to do and serve and help their programs. When Ramadan comes, Right? See what your local masjid requires of assistance and help. And come and help. You know, I, I, you know the book Fortress of the Muslim? Who knows this book? I'll guarantee everyone knows it here. Right? Everyone knows Fortress Hasn al-Muslim. You know, uh, the, the compiler of it, the Sheikh Saeed al-Qahtani. Rahimahullah, he passed away recently. Can you just imagine this man sitting in his house in front of his computer screen? No one knows about him and what he's doing. And he's compiling a hadith and he's writing. This is the dhikr that is said when you enter the bathroom. This is a dhikr when you walk out. This is a dhikr when you, before you eat, after you eat, before you sleep. And, and he's compiling and he has no clue that his book will go around the globe the way it did. Show how he served the Islam. Don't belittle any project. 
Don't think you need to go viral from the beginning. Ana, if I don't make it viral and I don't have these followers and these views, then I'm a lost cause and I cannot serve a deen. Be honest with Allah Azza wa Jalla and try your best. And perhaps it is something you do with honesty and sincerity that Allah Azza wa Jalla will give you great acceptance, perhaps in your lifetime, perhaps after your death. That's how we serve the deen of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And if you can't find a unique project for yourself to serve the deen of Allah, then assist someone that is already in this path. And I conclude with this hadith that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah used to mention a lot in his works. And he is one of al-ulama that authenticated this hadith. Listen to his hadith very carefully. He said, Inna Allah yudkhilu thalathata nafarin al-jannata bis-sahm al-wahid. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said there are three types of people that Allah Azza wa Jal admits into the paradise because of one arrow. Because of one arrow. He says, As-Sani'u al-Muhtasib wal-Munawilu lahu wal-Rami bihi. The one who manufactured the arrow, the one who carried the arrow and delivered it to the soldier, and the soldier that threw it upon the enemy of Allah Azza wa Jal. So you know what this means? It means it's not only the one that was engaged in that moment with the enemy of Allah that earned reward and everyone in the behind, in the back scenes got nothing. Each and every single one of them earned the same reward as the last one and they all entered the paradise. And if you wanted to draw a parallel from this hadith to what I'm talking about, that means those that help organize and put a program together. Like a sheikh, he came and there was a team behind him that put the program together. Maybe at times they will feel uh, stressed out. Maybe they'll become discouraged. Like we've put the program, it was difficult and we put everything together and what do we get out of it? Shuf, the one who puts the program together, the one who delivers, remember, delivers that arrow that's like delivering, executing this plan that was put together. And the one who finally makes the plan happen, all of them entered the paradise. So don't think that I need to be in the limelight to enter the paradise and earn Allah's pleasure. The one in the background is earning the very same reward. So if you can't find a project for yourself, Find a brother of yours that is already doing something serving the deen of Allah and contribute. Perhaps it could be a charity organization. It could be a masjid program. It could be whatever it is. And there are plenty of things that are out there. Don't ever walk into the deen of Islam and say, Allah, there's no room for me. I can't find anything for myself to do and walk away. Because whoever does that, وَأَمَّا الثَّالِثُ فَأَعْرَضَ فَأَعْرَضَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ One who turns away, Allah will turn away from him. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant us goodness and the ability to serve our deen. Allahu alam. Tawbah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. The next question is about trying to strike a balance between uh, study, work, and our religious obligations. Somebody asked, I'm struggling to uh, find that balance between my work and my religious obligations. What should I do? Shaykh, can I just add something before I get into this question? Even though the Shaykh, you know, gave enough and that which is sufficient. <coughs> You know, as the Sheikh mentioned, not everyone's going to become a scholar, right? That's something that we would wish for everyone to become a person of knowledge, right? But my brothers and my sisters, everyone here can learn bits and bobs that can perhaps direct him into the right direction. We all have time to learn bits and bobs, right? Even if it is the essentials and the basics, that's something we can all do, right? Even though I believe it's very far-fetched that you won't find time to do so. But let's just say for argument's sake, one can't. My brothers and my sisters, as the Sheikh mentioned, there are different avenues for you to take part in the khair. Right? Like the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi he said in the hadith, مَنْ جَهَّزَ غَازِيًا فَقَدْ غَزَى Whoever prepares, right, an expedition, those who go out now to defend the Islam, then it is as if he has gone out himself. Some of you have wealth. You are able to assist someone now to go and learn the religion of Allah. Right? Or you're able to invest in cameras. 
Wallahi, my brother Zaman says, always the guy in front of the camera that gets all the plaudits. While there are those who are sitting behind the camera, working away, it's not easy. The easiest part is to get that camera that you see over there, putting it here. The real work starts right after editing it, putting it into Premiere Pro, cutting bits and bobs out, putting it onto Instagram. You think I'm the one that puts everything on Instagram? People always come to Wallahi, that, that, you know, that one minute clip, that one minute clip, it's not me, someone else. Cuts it out and then he puts it up and then thousands of people watch it. And it may be the reason why they get guided. That person, as the Sheikh mentioned, he gets right, a share, a portion of the reward. People are able to help in different ways. Right? To conclude this point, my brothers and my sisters, and this is perhaps maybe something that you might be able to do as well. If you feel like that those glory days are behind you and you might not be able to go do it yourself. I really like the incident or that which led Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala authoring his book. Did you know my brothers and my sisters, the greatest and most authentic book after the book of Allah is what? Sahih al-Bukhari, right? You know how it started my brothers and my sisters? Ishaq ibn Rahuya. There's different ways to pronounce it, but you can say Rahuya. He said to Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, لو جمعتم كتابا مختصرا في سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. If only you compiled a book that summarizes the life of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Imam Bukhari said فوقع ذلك في قلبي. This hit my heart hard, and then he went and done it. You may know something, and you see someone go and advise them. You know, you see potential in someone, encourage them. A lot of time, what happens, my brothers and my sisters, when we see someone who's so smart and intelligent, someone with so much potential, instead of perhaps maybe directing them towards the dean side of things, it's always become a doctor, become an engineer, which is great. But if he has such intelligence that maybe others don't have, maybe I don't know, he'll be able to memorize the Quran, memorize other things so, so quickly. And that brings us on to the question that the Sheikh asked. Right? How can we balance? Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, I guarantee you. I have to mention the Samsung again. Right? On your iPhone, you can check how much you access certain apps. Am I correct to say that? Allahu A'lam. If you can do that on your Samsung, I don't think you can. Right? You can. Can you? You can now. Only now, I think. This is something new. I don't think that was... Anyways, on the phones, you can see this, my brothers and sisters, how much you are accessing... Right? Certain apps. Wallahi, we just cut that down by a fraction. We will find a lot of time. We will find a lot of time. You have to make a sacrifice, my brothers and my sisters. Even this term balance, it doesn't sit well with me. Balancing between deen and dunya. Because you only normally balance between things that are equal to one another, right? Wallahi, it doesn't sit well with me. But I know, let's just go with the fact that you have commitments, you have work, you have everything else. So it's hard to perhaps, you know, make it equal. I'm sure we can find time within our week. Every day, a little bit, we dedicate it to learning our religion. Can we not do that? The amount of time we spend watching these streamers. You've got kids glued to this guy running around shouting. Like this guy who's jumping from one place to another. What's his name again? Speed. Right? I'll drop names, brothers and sisters. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Because of what? Oh, he's running around like a madman. Doing backflips in a river. Right? And then we're just sitting there. We can't cut that down, my brothers and my sisters. Is that fair? Is that really fair, my brothers and my sisters? We give all that time to these disbelievers, right? We're watching them. We listen to everything that they say. And then tomorrow when the Dajjal comes, we're just going to run away, Right? We're going to be on the right side of history, my brothers and my sisters, while sides are being chosen and lines are being drawn. The thing is that straightforward, my brothers and my sisters. Do you really think that? We're believing everything that is, right? Cut down a little bit of that and give it to your religion, my brothers and my sisters. Wallahi, we're coming to the end of times is getting very, very problematic. It's getting hard and hard. And when the Dajjal comes, my brothers and my sisters, He's not some uh, comic figure. It's real. Not a single prophet came except that he warned the people against the Jal.
نعم الله نايف I can just add يعني something very short to this Sheikh mentioned something very important and he said that the word balance doesn't fit right with him that's exactly true what are you balancing out this world and life with the afterlife obviously the more valuable of the two is the afterlife so that should weigh a lot more in the heart of the believer and a lot more effort and time should go towards that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in the Quran وَابْتَغِي فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, seek the afterlife with that which Allah has given you in this worldly life. Everything you're given in this life of wealth and health and family and children and knowledge and experience and whatever it is, all that Allah is saying, use it to build your afterlife. Use it to build your afterlife. Then look how he spoke about this worldly life. He said, وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا and don't forget your portion of this life. You know this language of وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ It's like you're so busy in the afterlife that you almost forgot your dunya. So Allah said, don't forget that you're still in this dunya. Enjoy it in a manner that is pleasing to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam is a principle in the Qur'an. وَابْتَغِي فِيمَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدنيا. And don't make it very difficult for yourself. Because everything you do may be converted through the intention as a worship that is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. Every time you walk out of the house and you dress covering your awrah for the man and for the woman, you're doing so because Allah commanded you to cover the awrah. So now you walk out every moment you have clothes on covering an awrah is a worship. You're earning reward for it because you're obeying Allah's command. When you eat, before you eat, your intention is, I'm eating to strengthen this body upon the worship of Allah. Otherwise, if I've avoided eating, I will, my body will deteriorate and I'll be weak when it comes to the obligations and the commandments of Allah. So you eat on that basis and you drink on that basis and you sleep on that basis and you go to work. Why? Because Allah said, Allah Azza He said, walk on the paths in this world of life, walk on its edges, walk on the path that is being paved out for you to walk on. And eat from his provision, go and seek his provision. So when you're out there working, you tell yourself, I'm doing so because Allah said in the Quran, go and seek my provision. But most importantly afterwards, you show gratitude to Allah for that which you earned that day. So you don't complain about what came. And afterwards, وَعْبُدُوهُ And you worship Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how you achieve. We don't want to achieve a balance. We want to achieve what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu alam. Shaykh, is there any questions from the sisters? I think we have to equal rights here. Right? When it comes to the questions. These are questions from the brothers and sisters. Okay, okay. Can't leave our sisters. Right. Okay, based on that, inshallah, um, this question he proposed to Sheikh uh, Abdul uh, Some guidelines between uh, brothers and sisters interacting in university setting. So, Islamic society, um, they're, they're trying to actually um, do a service for Islam, do good. Um, and now, in this environment, some guidelines that can help them. Some guidelines that can help them. You know, brothers and sisters, you know, the shaitan at times may use a door or an avenue of khair to trap you. I think it's absolutely wonderful that brothers have their Islamic societies and the sisters are also involved. However, there has to be boundaries that are set. One thing can lead to another and another and another. Interacting with each other, right, directly. While you're all at ages where your hormones are spiraling out of control. This is the reality of the matter. When you think about it, these young brothers and sisters, when they are at university, they are at the peak of their beauty. Am I wrong to say that? This is when their hormones become intensified. Everything around you is inviting you to a haram. Right? It's calling you to it. It's hatalek. Let's get it on. 
So there has to be boundaries in place, my brothers and my sisters. You can look at me, what I'm about to say right now, and think that this is extreme. But, my brothers and my sisters, with how everything is already extremely hard, and now we don't put barriers and precautions in place, we're going to end up just joining that long queue of casualties that end up eventually falling into I'll tell you guys a story of something that happened. Excuse me, I have to give this muqaddimah for us to really understand and perhaps it can resonate. In one of the cities in the UK, they had a musalla. You know the musallas over there? Sometimes they put a partition in between. They put a partition in between. So a sister one time had a question and she heard a brother walking into the other side. The shaitan said, you know this question that you've been trying to find answers to all of this time? There's a brother, you know, go and ask him. So the first day she went and asked the question. She got her answer and she left. Second time, right? She went back, asked that question and she got her answer with a smile. And she left. The third time, my brothers and my sisters, the exact same process. She went to get her question answered. And wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, they ended up doing haram inside of the musallah. Which led to her becoming impregnated. And I had to deal with the case. Can you see, my brothers and my sisters, how the shaitan right, can play around with this kind of situation? They're in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And the Messenger told us, never does one seclude one with another. Ma khala rajma amratin la kana thadim shaitan. You seclude yourself with a woman, the third is going to be shaitan. Is this possible without the shadow of time? Sometimes we need to hear these incidents in order for us to really realize that something like that can happen. I dealt with it, they contacted me, the Islamic University. And I would mention it in my university tour that I done. And they would ask me, which university was it? Tell us. No, you, it doesn't matter. A shahid min al-kalam. There has to be what? Barriers in place. Right. What I would normally suggest to my brothers and my sisters, if they can what? Liaise with each other either by email. As for having each other's numbers, you may think to yourself, but he's emailing her anyway. Well, like, there's a difference. If there is something that is needed, email one another. I know so many incidents, brothers and sisters. So many incidents. Keep it by email, right? And perhaps maybe even if you desperately needed to speak to the head ISOC, let there be a WhatsApp group with one of her maharim in there. If it's that desperate that you needed to speak to her to sort something out, let there be someone there. Right? Let there be someone that is present in that conversation that prevents this private conversation that end up taking place. Prevention is better than the cure. Prevention is better than the cure. Right? Keep a distance away. Emails back and forth that ends up taking place. Wahakada. You don't need to ask her for a number. You don't need to ask her for socials. Cut all of that out. You don't need to see her picture when you're what? Conversing with her, all of that, you don't need to. This is how they professionally work, right? In workplaces, email and you get it back. Right. When we look at the Quran, my brothers and my sisters, we have an example of Maryam والسلام, and we also have Yusuf. Maryam والسلام, when she was approached by Jibreel, سوين, he was in the form of a human being. What was her response, my brothers and my sisters, upon being approached? Did she say, oh, tfaddali, no tfaddal, because it was a man, right? Tfaddal, can I grab you coffee and some dates that you see on the palm tree? Was she like very loose with him? Abadan. Qalat inni a'udhu bil rahmani mink. Straight away she said, a'udhu billah. A'udhu billah. Right? Maybe apply that, my brothers and my sisters, when she slips into her or into yours, he, she, whatever, right? Into the DMs. Apply that. If you are a person of taqwa, stay away from me. Likewise, Yusuf والسلام, when she locked him inside of that bedroom, this woman was going crazy, infatuated. She lost her mind. And she said, Hey, Talak, let's get it on. 
First thing he done was seek refuge in Allah and then he began to run. And then it shocks me, my brothers and my sisters, that brothers and sisters, they ask this question, can men and women just be friends? Can men and women just be friends? What do you guys think? I will say to the university students, go and ask Steve Harvey. He's got a nice clip on this. Where he's asked this question, you know what he says? The lady is asking him this question. His response is, we men, the way we are, we are just waiting for that peak in the door to slip in. It's a non-Muslim, my brothers and my sisters. I have to quote a non-Muslim for us to understand. Right? That's just how men are. This is how you've been created. It affects. It has an impact. Right? Well, that's what I would suggest, my brothers and my sisters. I'm just going to add to that one very important practical matter. Now, was, uh, no, Allah, very Sheikh, sufficient. No, 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 I'll tell you something. If you're on the university grounds and you experience a rage in your desire and temptation, then at the end of that day, you visit the Melbourne Zoo. For indeed, the one who visits animals, his rage of temptation and desire would calm down. Well, inshallah ta'ala, the matter would be over for you, bi-ithnillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> from the beneficial, practical steps, inshallah. When you see animals, the desire goes. And he, that I mentioned for you, and I finalize with this, Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr mentioned a beautiful story. He said there was a young boy that came to him and telling him his story, he said, Ya Sheikh, I left my house and I was intending a zina. And you know, when, you, when you've dressed up and you've put perfume and you're walking towards a zina, the closer and closer you get to your destination, the more and more the rage is burning from inside. He said, as I'm walking to her house, I saw a dog. He saw a dog that was thirsty and hungry and walking around in circles trying to look for food. So then he said, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Allah Azza wa Jal, put in this boy's heart to have mercy on this animal and to go and feed it. So he said, he said the story to a sheikh, he said to him, a sheikh, I entered the local store. I purchased some canned food for the dog. I opened it up and I fed the dog and I just observed the dog eating and drinking. And afterwards, wallahi, I did not have a desire for al-haram, for a zina. I left it and I went back home and from that day until now, subhanallah, I don't have a desire for a zina. A sheikh, may Allah preserve him. He mentioned a beautiful hadith in this context and he said and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said irhamu man fil ardi yarhamkum man fil sama have mercy on those who are on earth even if it's an animal and the one in the heavens will bestow his mercy upon you and if you have if you're battling yourself with a desire with a temptation for Allah to bestow His mercy upon you is for Him to distract you and turn you away from Al-Haram. He makes Al-Haram disgusting in your eyes and in your heart. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانَ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِصْيَانِ Allah Azza wa Jal makes the believers hate, sin and disobedience and rebellion. So perhaps... It's just as simple as having mercy on an animal. Imagine then having mercy on another human being or on a brother of yours or a sister of yours in the house or upon your parents. If you're battling a sin, have show some mercy to others so that Allah Azza wa Jal bestows His mercy upon you and turns you away from Al-Haram. Wallahu Alaikum.